de handa kura baba haya oh malike tola baba haya is dependable god is the dependable one the only god god who is dependable oh thank you lord jesus for this evening thank you for our hearts are open uh, ears are open our hearts are open our eyes see the things you want us to see our ears hear the things you want us to hear and our hearts are open enough thank you for the spirit of revelation is pour forth in this place thank you because we're changed forever by your spirit in the name of jesus amen good evening everyone such a joy to come into your homes your cars living room kitchens your bed wherever you might be this evening bringing you god's word and i'm so delighted um to just speak up from where i left off last wednesday on the teaching series on the word of god and the power of god's word in our lives and this week i, I want to speak on bank banking on the word banking on the word banking on the word you can bank on god's word you can bank on god's word and you know um last week i spoke about you know the word of god i think it was a powerful time war facts um you can just um the messages on youtube we preached last week it will bless you um the part the war facts you know how in this life we're fa- faced with you know contradictory facts you know here and there uh, the facts of god's word and then the facts of life and you know situations and circumstances were faced with and such a powerful teaching but today i'm going to just take it a step forward and speaking on banking on the word um i like us to start this evening uh, mark chapter 4 mark chapter 4 thank you lord jesus thank you for the anointing that makes the teaching of your word easy thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus mark 426 and he said the kingdom of god is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and he should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow he himself does not know how verse 28 for the earth yields crop by itself first the blade then the the head after that the full grain in the head verse 29 says but when the grain ripens immediately it puts in the sickle because the harvest has come you know the spirit of god when i was reading this scripture earlier the spirit of god impressed on my heart that some people their delay has been in that verse 29 they've done everything they were that supposed to do but they just need to put in the sickle for the harvest and i i believe this has a lot to do with positioning and listen to the spirit of god a lot of people have their harvest out there ready for them to put in the sickle and to take an instruction from god that will open everything up um but yeah no they're not paying attention but it says but when the grain ripens immediately it puts in the sickle because the harvest has come one of the prayers you should pray god open my eyes let me recognize the harvest that is ready for me to take open my eyes to recognize it you should pray, play that pray that prayer open my eyes let me recognize my opportunities help me to recognize my opportunity sensitivity to the spirit of god is a critical part of your you know taking the hold on your possessions you must be sensitive to the spirit of god to be able to take what is yours you must be absolutely sensitive to the spirit of god um so but that's not what we are today it says for the earth yields crop by itself the earth yields crop by itself the earth yields crop by itself the okay and then he says first the blade then the then the head after that the full grain in the head and using the corn here how corn grows
If you go back to verse 26, it says the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter, scatter seed into the ground. Or as if a man should cast a seed into the ground. As if a man should sow seed on the ground. Now the kingdom of God here speaks about realm. Which in another way you can call the method of operation. The modus operandi. It says the modus operandi of a kingdom is what we're talking about here. It says it's like a man who puts seed into the ground. And he should sleep by night and rise by day. That is to say, he does what he's supposed to do, right? And then he continues, which means that he doesn't stay there worrying over the seed. It's not like, oh, is it going? You know, um, in Africa, in Nigeria, you know, my part of town, and some of you may have experienced this growing up, you know, where you get a seed, a grain, or corn, or something, and you go plant it, and you're checking it every morning to see if it starts to, if it start growing. Like, oh, I planted it, it doesn't start growing. Oh, I just, uh, when is it start growing? It says this guy, no, he doesn't do that here, so to speak. He says he sleep by night and rise by day, which means he goes about life, and then, but the seed is sprouting by itself. Okay, so twenty-eight says for the earth yields crops. By itself, first the blade, and then it goes on, on and on. And so it says the operation of the kingdom of God can be likened to a farmer who plants corn or maize, and then he goes about his life doing all the things, other things he's meant to be doing. He said, but there is a process that is going on that he doesn't directly control, but that process is going is going on. That process is happening. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 Luke 8 11 banking on the word thank you Holy Ghost Luke 8 11 oh thank you Holy Ghost he says now this was you know the parables here and you know he's talking about different parables here but it, this was a parable of the sower in Luke 8 5 he says a sower went out to sow a seed all right, if you go to verse 11, he says, Now the parable is this the seed is the word. So he says in Mark 4, it's, the kingdom of God is like a man who put seed into the ground. But he says here, so it means that if the seed is the word, what it means here is that what he puts into the ground is the word. The kingdom of God, what he plants rather, is the word, which means that in the kingdom we operate by the word. In the kingdom, the word of God is what we plant. The word of God is what we put into the ground. And so it means there is no way you can effectively operate. In, I mean, there's no way you can effectively operate the New Testament, I mean, the kingdom, without planting the word. You can't say you're an effective kingdom person if you do not plant the word. Every effective kingdom person must plant. Every effective kingdom person must plant the word. It is how the kingdom works. It is how the kingdom operates. Genesis here. 129. Let's go to Genesis 129. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Genesis 1.29. It says, And God said, Now, see, I have given you, have, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of, the, of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you and shall be for you. It shall be for, fee, for food. So God says, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth. And that was how man was introduced to um, this life of creativity. God gave him seed. He gave him seed. And he says, if you take this seed, I mean, get these trees, I have put seed in them, this garden of Eden, I'm going to put you, you are going to be able to replicate this garden because this 
trees have seeds that you can plant to have more. There is no way you can operate in the productive life. There is no way you can engage and live out the mandate of God without planting seeds and getting harvest. There is no way you can operate the kingdom without planting the word and getting results. Genesis 8.22. Now in Genesis chapter 8, when God, in Genesis, I think start from chapter 6, 7, when the flood was going to come, God told Adam to just stay, I mean, Noah to take a pair of each of the animals and then he took them onto the on board the ship and then in verse 28 and Genesis chapter 8 here um, the ship had landed and then everything with life was going to start all over again look at what God tells Noah in Genesis 8 22 here he says while the earth remains see time and harvest cold and eat Winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. But he says, why the earth remain seed time and harvest? There will always be seed time. There, all, there has to be seed time. There has to be seed time. You, you can't effectively leave the kingdom of God, which is operating God's system, if you don't plant seeds. And these seeds we plant in the kingdom is the word. The same way a farmer cannot effectively have a productive venture or cannot have a productive venture without planting, believers, kingdom folks, cannot maximize the kingdom without planting the word. Because it says the kingdom of God is as if a man should put a seed into the ground. Now in the natural, without seeds, there is, there is no way you can reproduce things. Because every seed will produce after its kind. So God gives us seed in form of word. His word in the kingdom. Because he said the word of God is the seed. That as we plant this word into different areas of our lives. It's going to yield a return. John chapter 1. I'll stay with me tonight. John chapter 1. The kingdom of God is as if a man should cast a seed into the ground. And the seed is the word. And scripture clearly establishes the place of seeds. And the earth, it's clear. Even, you know, I said earlier that, you know, God told Adam to take a pair of each animal. Because what God is doing, you know, after original creation, where the earth is concerned, is his reproductive work. So it just... Take lion and lioness. Take take a pair of each and go on board. Because from that one lion and that one lioness, we have lions upon lions now. We are lions now. From that one elephant, one male elephant and one female elephant, we have elephant till now. Just and that's the power of the seed. It didn't have to take like fifty thousand just to one. Because there is seed that will produce every other one is in that one. And you know, the, power, the word of God is so powerful. So powerful that it can produce endless results. Just imagine the effect of a single seed. A single mango seed. A, a single corn. Uh, the effect is, is huge. It's unquantifiable. You plant, you get more. You keep getting more. You know, it just keeps producing and keeps producing. And he says the kingdom of God, it operates this principle of seed that you sow into the ground and you get harvest out of. That you take the word of God, you plant it in the kingdom, like in the God system, the same way the farmer takes the corn and puts it into the ground. So, a believer cannot have an effective life or cannot operate the kingdom effectively if he's not a seed planter. And the seed is the word. The seed is the word. He said the seed is the word of God. 
So, you know, I, I know it's it, it, it a lot easier for us. It, I think it's actually easier. No, it's not easier to complain. It seems it looks e- like it's easier to complain. But the reality is that it's more stressful to actually complain and to just do what you're supposed to do. That you can just go through life and just talk about the challenges you have, the things that are hard, the things that aren't, the struggles you have, and, and so on and so forth. But you see, the real deal is that you must know how to plan the word of God in God's system. That if you know how to plan God's word in God's system, you're going to have a, a, a result-filled life. Just the same way you, we don't have corn all over now because I'm just the same way we have corn because there, there's a seed of corn that was planted. Just the same way we have, whatever you see came out of a seed, whatever you're going to be able to produce as a believer, to, to, to operate in the kingdom effectively beyond the natural where people are like stuck with the five senses. If you want to produce results on God's level, you have to be able to plant God's word. If you don't plant God's word deliberately, you won't have deliberate results. You must plant the word. You must plant the word. You must plant the word. Without planting the word, you won't have results. You will have result. You will struggle with result because in the kingdom, just you operate this way. The kingdom of God is like a man who puts seed in the ground. The kingdom of God is like a man who puts seed in the in the in the ground. The operation of the kingdom must involve the planting and the sowing of the word. The operation of the kingdom was operated so, so in the involved the sowing of the word. John chapter 1. In John 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, the word was God. So, word, God. Word, Jesus. Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus. If you read the last, he's talking about Jesus here. Um, you know. Because you see in verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Which means that Jesus, to come flesh, became a man and lived amongst us. But let's go back to John 1, 1 here. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. Verse 2 says, verse 3 says, all things were made through the word. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Everything created in the earth has the DNA of the word. Everything created in the word has the DNA of the word. Who is the person of Jesus? So, the, there is nothing outside of him that was created. So, the word is the source. The word, this is what came up in my heart, is the producer of everything. Is the source, is the producer of everything. Everything came out of the word. All things good were made by him. This is it. And this is powerful, I believe. The word morphs into whatever it needs to become. The word morphs into whatever the word needs to become. The word morphs into whatever it needs to become. Because all things were made by him. All things came out of him. So everything is shaped by the word. You know, when he sent Moses to Pharaoh, he said, tell him I I am. Who said, you say, I am that I am. Whatever I need to be, I am. So when you introduce the word into any situation... What happens 
is that the word begins to create whatever it needs to create. Because in the kingdom, the kingdom is operated by the word. The kingdom of God is as if a man should put seed into the ground. He doesn't know how, but it is growing. Let's go to that scripture again. Mark 4. Mark chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just go back to that scripture. It says, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and they should sleep night and rise by day. The seed should sprout and grow by himself. And grow in he himself does not know how. The word of God will become whatever it needs to become. Every intelligence needed to produce the result desired and required is embedded. It's like the word has this information coded into it that when you apply it to a situation, it will just become the answer it needs to become. It has been designed by itself. So every believer must get into God's word and believe God to give them scriptures to speak to their situation. Scriptures that Jesus will reveal himself through. I thought that when I started this series, it could refer to that. The first in this series, I thought about Jesus, you know, with the word, you know, and the person of Jesus and how Jesus reveals himself through the word through every situation. So when you say you are applying, you know, it says the kingdom of God operates this way. Man plant seed into the ground, right? He sows, scatter seed, seed into the ground. And then the ground begins to produce result. And then we see clearly here that Jesus, the word, the presence of Jesus is the word. And so I, from scriptures, I get a scripture that I'm, using for a situation and I'm confessing or I'm reading the scriptures and a particular scripture stands out for me and I feel like I can apply it to my situation. The moment I start, I, that kicks in. What happens is that I'm stepping into a zone where the person of Jesus is going to be revealed through that scripture. So say I have a challenge with my health or I have issue with my family, I have a challenge with my finance, and I say, oh, the, but the word of God says this concerning me, the word of God, scripture says that, and I'm declaring that, oh, this is my reality according to God's word. The moment I step into that, I'm coming into a zone where Jesus starts to reveal himself. Even though it's a scripture, I'm supposedly applying to that situation. Now, because Jesus is the person of the word, Jesus begins to reveal himself through that scripture. And when I say Jesus begins to reveal himself through that scripture, what happens is that he's working in and through that situation to produce a result in my life. So case in point, I take a scripture from Peter written about health. That he bore our sicknesses and by the stripes we have been healed. Now, this was a scripture, this was a word ministered by the Spirit of God to Apostle Peter and he, as he wrote a letter to a church. So uh, he wrote a letter to the church, to the church of Jesus Christ, right? When he wrote the letter, and then he wrote that, and, you know, which was a fact of redemption, right? Which is, and the revelation of, you know, that came from Isaiah, when he said himself, he took our infirmities, he carried our sicknesses, he bore everything. So Peter is writing that same scripture that God spoke to the prophet Isaiah, that he wrote down. Peter is talking about that same scripture and he writes it to the church. And, but then I have, a, I have a health challenge and I take that scripture in 1 Peter 2.24 and I started to declare it that the Bible says he bore my sins and carried my sicknesses and by stripes I've been healed. Is that scripture, I'm planting that scripture into the, my health. In fact, one powerful, okay, let me finish this though so I don't, you know, so I, I'll come back to that, you know. So 
I begin to take that scripture and I'm applying it to my health that I will not be sick, that this sickness is taken out of my body because by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. As I continue to do that, what happens? What then happens is that as I'm, so I'm quoting a scripture, I'm meditating on the scripture inspired by the, um, by the apostle Peter, but as I'm saying that scripture concerning my health, I'm saying that scripture concerning my health. Jesus, the total sum of God's personality, the word, the idea of God, everything about Jesus represents the entire idea about God. The total sum of thoughts about God is represented by Jesus. Jesus moves into, begins to work in my situation and is revealing himself in my situation. You know, he says when Jesus is revealed, that you see and experience the glory of God. So the end product of me saying that scripture to my, concerning my health is that I begin to walk in divine health. Jesus has revealed himself to me. And by revealing himself to me, I mean he shows up in that situation. And he shows up where my health is concerned. And, you know, I step into this place where I'm working in the reality of what he has done for me. That is an example of how Jesus reveals himself through the written word that I'm applying to my situation. So ultimately, I reveals himself in my situation because, you know, when, I mean, everything changes. It reveals himself in my situation. I see the glory of God. I experience his splendor. My, if I was sick, I get well. Uh, Jesus, the word, who is the word, has revealed himself in my health. But I took the written word, which was inspired. In the Bible, you see that scripture on the screen. It says, all scripture given by inspiration. So by the inspiration of the spirit... By the inspiration of the Spirit, scriptures have been written in Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, I take any one of these scriptures, or some of these scriptures, most of the time, as directed by the same Spirit of God who inspired the scripture. So I go and take that scripture, and I feel, oh, I can apply this scripture to my situation. My heart talks in that direction. Or God specifically tells me, or as I'm just reading, I stumbled on it. Or I've been reading my Bible before, and I saw it, and then somehow I marked it. Then I was in a situation, and that scripture rises up in my heart. So I go to that scripture, and then I read it out. I search it out on Google, my Esau, and on, look, look, look for it in my concordance. And once I find that scripture, then I start speaking that scripture, I start declaring that scripture, you know, and so that takes me to, okay, I've gone ahead myself, forgive me, but I'm going to just explain that some more, you know, in a bit, how we actually sow the word, I've already, I'm already talking about how we sow the word, which is basically, basically we sow the word of God by speaking the word of God, you know, but Jesus says in Matthew, is it Matthew 4, 4, now, he says, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so, you, you take these words and you begin to speak them out. When you speak the word, that's how you sow the word. You sow the farmer goes and plants it. But the word of God, it says, it says in Romans chapter 10. So, here, right here, right now, I'm explaining. I think I have one thought hanging somewhere. The Holy Ghost will take me back to it. What I'm just trying to do, I just don't want to gloss over and say, oh, okay, the word of God, uh, when you sow the word of God, it produces results in your life. I'm trying to explain the, the process or how it works. And I'm, first of all, I must establish, as I've said, that the word of God is what? Is sowed, is planted by speaking. So it says the kingdom, Mark 4, it says the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast a seed into the ground. Question he says, so he says, so we say that the kingdom of God is God's the operation of the system of God. And then he says, the seed that is sowed into the ground is the word. So if I want to operate the system of God and get results as a believer, I must know how to sow the word. Then but how exactly do I sow the word? Now, this written word of God inspired, said the holy men of God, they wrote as they were moved by the spirit. And so some of the things that were written were said. And as they were said, they wrote them down. Some of the things that were that are written were seen. As they were seen, they wrote them down. All right? So these words have now been written for us. So we can read them out. 
and release them. So the written word, we must put it in our mouth. So how do we sow the word? How do we sow the word? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 10. He says, listen to this here. He says, verse 9. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Classic kingdom oppression. So this word, I must, it was preached to me. And after it's preached to me, I believe it. Like when, when in Acts chapter 2, Peter had preached to the crowd, then they say, well, then what must we do to be saved? So it goes on to say, well, to be saved, you have to confess. You have to open your mouth and receive the lordship of Jesus. And so the word is spoken to you. The word has been written down and all that. Then you take that word, you put it in your mouth, and you begin to speak. You see, the same way we got salvation, that's how we came into the kingdom. We were brought into the kingdom through salvation by speaking the word. We're going to continue in the kingdom by speaking the word. You can't come into the kingdom by salvation, by through speaking the word, confessing the lordship of Jesus, and then you want to operate the kingdom with your closed lips. No, you have to continue to sow the word of the kingdom. And you have the written word there. Primarily, you have the written. In fact, sometimes, you know, I was speaking to someone the other day, I was saying that I make a lot of, someone was saying the other day, I make a lot of reference to the prophetic word because some of the things that you will sow are the words that God will speak to you in the place of prayer. As you pray, and certain words will come to your heart, you write it down. Those words, you sow those ones too. And so when you are declaring, ah, God told me this, so I declare this, and you begin to say, what are you doing? The word that God gave you in the place of prayer, you are now sowing it by speaking it. And so you sow the written word. God, the Holy Ghost, who inspired the word, right? He inspired the word. As you read the word, as you meditate the word, it will take your heart to certain portion of the scripture that address specific areas of your life. And then those words, you now, now you've read them, you meditated on them, you meditated on them, you now start to say those words. That is how, and that's when you begin to sow the word in the kingdom. It doesn't matter all that is going on around you, you can bank on the word. Because this is how the kingdom works. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground or in the ground. The kingdom of God is as if a man should sow a seed. And he says, the seed is the word. And so the word you find in the written scriptures, the word you find in the prophetic word and the different things that God has spoken to you in your personal place of prayer, or God has spoken to you through the mouth of other people. But of course, there's an agreement in your heart. And so that, that, that's, that's the material that when you begin to release, Jesus steps in on the scene. And reveals himself through the situation. So in John chapter 10. Um, Romans 10. Um, pardon me. It says. Let me read from verse. Ah, I wish I could start from verse 1. But just let me go a little bit to give you more context. right? So verse 8. Romans 10. It says. But what does it say? The word is near you. In your mouth. And in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, verse 9. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You have to confess, confess, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10. It says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, 
Confession is made unto salvation. So that's how you came into the kingdom. That's how you operate the kingdom. You speak the word. And I'm saying that when you're speaking the word, what you're doing is that you are planting the word. And when you plant the word, the word is bankable. The word you can bank on. Because once you have moved to that place where you plant the word, it says the earth will yield of itself. It will produce the blade. It will produce, it will produce everything that it needs to produce. Because you stay with the word. And, you know, it's important for me here to mention that, you know, when we plant the word through speaking, we sow the word through speaking, we also water the word of God. How do we water the word that we are planted? We water the word by continuing to affirm what we believe. We also water the word through spirit-inspired instructions. Whatever God says to you, when, you know, Mary told the guys, you know, at the, at the wedding in Cana, he said, whatever he says to you, just do it. That's how you water the seeds you've planted in the ground as well. God brings something to your heart. You've done all you could, and then you feel, you know, you have confessed the way you're confessing the word. Then the spirit of God will inspire certain actions. Sometimes it will give you instructions. Sometimes it's nothing. All you need to do is just continue to what continue to water the word by affirming the things that you believe that you confess. Romans 10. Romans 10. Again, with the heart, man believes, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That's the operation. So the word of God is sowed. You know, it says, scripture says, you see the scripture on the screen, declare and be justified. Declare and be justified. Your words, through words you plant. Through words you sow. But that's exactly how you came into the kingdom through salvation. You confessed, you believed, then you confessed. So this one's you have to speak the words out. And by speaking the words, what you are doing is that you are sowing the word. And the word you are sowing, my friend, is bankable. I quoted this scripture last week. I'm going to quote it again as I close, as I begin to close this evening. It says in Acts 20, um, Acts 19:20. He says, so mightily grew the word. I think we should read it today. So mightily grew the word and prevailed. Now, Paul had been in the city of Ephesus. It was a challenging missionary um, season for him. These guys, you know, had their issues. It was a highly idolatrous city. There are all kinds of issues there. People had charms. It's like Ijebu, you know, and all of that. Okay, sorry. You know. <laughs> Where again? You know, I mean, this is different places and all of those things. So, you know, it's not just Ijebu. Anywhere, you know, I mean, I heard just about Brazil, Portugal, and all these places in, in South America, you know, in the Caribbean, where people have charms and all of those things. But hey, you know, in my, you know, it says Ephesus was, you know, was an interesting city. They had charms, they had all those kind of stuff. And they were trying to push back. They had the Diana, the goddess that they were worshiping, and I had all these issues. But see, verse, and ask, you know, uh, let me read from verse 18. It says, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their, their deeds, 19. And also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books. Many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. silver. Verse 20 says, So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Friends, as I close tonight, I can tell you, I can assure you, I can guarantee you that the word of God you can bank on. Because in the kingdom, see, this is exactly how you go born again. You confess the lordship of Jesus, and you were saved. Everything Christ did for you became a reality. The instant, the moment you come, the moment you confess the lordship of Jesus, everything He did became for you, had done for you, became a reality. Reality at that instant. 
And now that you're in the kingdom, you must show the world. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's something I said I was going to get back to. I can get back to it now. You know, you don't build your house in the rain. You know, it says, it says there's it that scatters and yet increases. You know, don't wait for situations to become bad in your life. Don't wait for your eye to start twitching. Don't wait for your head to be banging. Don't wait for you to come down with the, with the fever. Uh, don't wait till... Don't, don't, don't wait till something bad really happens. Even if you're, 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 you're doing very well financially, keep sowing the word. Uh, even if your health is okay, keep sowing the word. Even if your children, you know, are not wayward and behaving well, keep sowing the word. Before you even have the children, keep sowing the word into your life. Before you have a mom, keep sowing the word into your family. Scatter the word. Hallelujah. De- deliberately, but put it in different areas. Scatter the word. Plant the word. Because it will yield results. It will produce the results. So don't wait. Nobody build, they don't, you don't build in the rain. You don't build in the rain. For you to build in the rain, you must have something that covers you. You can't be build, you can't directly rain is falling on you as you're trying to mix stuff and build. No, you don't build in the rain. Learn to build before the rain. God can help you, right? It is bad. You have you don't have a choice. Well, you have to believe God, right, in that situation. But really, before the storm comes, plant the word. Sow the word. Sow the word so much that you know you don't even smell some things. Go on the offense with the word. Go on the offense with the word. Go on the offense with the word. So don't wait till things are falling all things are falling apart. Build a house by planting the word. Sow the word. So 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 because you can bank on it. It's an investment that will yield beautifully. You know some people where everything is fine. They they don't they don't sow the word. They don't even pay attention to the kingdom. Because it seems like they are getting it right naturally. No, 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 no. The raining day will come. It will always come. Challenges will come. Storms of life will come. You must have something to fall back on. You must have a harvest ready in your storehouse in those seasons. For the earth will yield of itself. The word of God will always produce results. It, it, it is bankable. It is bankable. Finally tonight, Isaiah 51. For, for you, for you, 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 she's the kingdom, yes, is the power. Isaiah 51. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The word is bankable. The word is bankable. The word is bankable. Point to two people around you. Tell them tonight. The word is bankable. Come on, go ahead. The word is bankable. Tell them, tell them. The word is bankable. Let me, I can't hear you. The word is bankable. Find one or two other persons around you. Tell them the word is bankable. The word is bankable. The word is bankable. It's bankable. It it will deliver a result. It's bound to deliver a result all the time. For the earth will yield of itself. You know, sometimes we're in a place where we feel like, no, ah, this is so hard, this is so difficult. I don't see how this is going to work. You don't you see, it says it doesn't know how. It sleeps night and day, but it's working. It's working. You know, we can just play those, can you just, you know, give me a little bit of volume and just play some strings or whatever it is they call it. It's a Louvre Bando Suse Brecatere Bada Nanandi Gere Brebe Bebe. Yeah, strings, eh? I think that's what you call it. Yeah, that's good. Caraba Susu Brecatere. A little volume, a little volume. I'll ask you to drop the volume. Care Mandonon de Shiga da Braba Baba Baba. Zere and the Kusa Bala Baba Baba. Ulovrom da Kila Braba Dosukuru. For the earth we yield of itself. For the earth we yield of itself. 
For the earth will yield of itself. He says the kingdom of God is as a man, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He should sleep night by night and by day. And the seed should grow and sprout. He himself does not know how, but it's growing. He himself doesn't know how, but it's working. For the earth will yield of itself. Ayakara Baba. For the earth yields crop by itself. The word produces results in your life by itself. Hallelujah. By itself. You can bank on the word. You can bank on the word. The word will yield results, produce results by itself. Come on. The word will yield. Let me check another translation. The word will yield result by itself. By itself, by itself, glory to God. The word will yield result by itself. The seed will produce, the crop will yield by itself. The passion transition says all by itself, it sprouts. All by itself. Let me read from verse 27, the passion translation, Mark 4, Mark 4, 27. It says, it goes to bed and gets up by day by day. And the seed sprouts and grows tall, though it knows not how. All by itself, it sprouts. And the soil produces a crop. First, the green stem. Then, the head of, on the stalk. And then the fully developed grain in the head. There is a divine intelligence that makes the word produce results in every area of your life when you introduce it to it. It's working. You might not know how. Don't get apprehensive. Don't start to complain and murmur. You know, I said, you know, when you are planted, one of the way you primarily water is continue to affirm the word you believe. Continue to declare in the face of contradictory evidence. Win the war of facts. We thought that last week. Win that war of facts and continue to declare this is my reality as you march on to victory. If even when you're in a season of your life when you don't seem to see the result, the word is bankable. Stay with the word. For the word, the crop will produce by itself. It will sprout by itself. All you need to be is believe. Believe. Stay believing. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who stay in the word. Who stay on the word. Say, it might not feel like my emotions are going the opposite direction. But I'm going to stay with the word. 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 Allah ko shakaraba. You know the one that you sustain that go, you know, I don't know. And you play, the stay, aha, yeah, yeah, yeah. By itself, it will produce results. Oh, pastor, it's difficult. Yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't seem difficult. I, I can't even get my mind together to focus it, but you have to do it because you just need to stay there because the temptation is to want to complain and start to murmur after a while because it seems like it's not working. But the word will produce results by itself. By itself. You just need to stay there. Don't uproot that seed with unbelief, with negative words, with complaining and murmuring. No. Keep declaring the words. Switch into thanksgiving. When, you're, when you don't know what to say, or it seems like you're going to say something that's not good, start thanking and praising him and rejoicing, for the word will produce result by itself. You can bank on the word. I don't know how bad it might seem today. You can bank on the word. Maybe everyone you know is anointed has prayed for you. You've done, you've done all that you can do. And then it seems like it's not going away. If you stay with the word, the word will produce result by itself. You know, someone said, he went, he and be home and said, when you have decided, made, your mind, made up your mind to stand forever, you won't have to stand for too long. For the word will produce result by itself. It's, you can bank on it. You can bank on it. You can bank on it. And he said, he should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow by himself. 
He doesn't know how. God's Word translation says, He sleeps night and night and is awake during the day. And the seed sprouts and grow. And the seeds sprout and grow. Although the man doesn't know how. The ground produces grain by itself. First, the green blade appears, then the head and the food, uh, head and the grain. I want to encourage you. You must plant the word. Isaiah 51, verse 6. Lastly, quickly, and I'll close here tonight. I'll probably pick up from here next week. Let's return to that place where you place premium, high, very high premium, the highest possible premium. You just place premium on the word. Where you place premium on the word. Because you know it. You can bank on it. In every situation of life. You can, I, I tell you, you can bank on it. What the devil tries to do is to distract you and make you give up and walk away from it because it seems like it's not working. Or it hasn't worked for a while. Stay with it. It, it, it is bankable. Don't try to figure out how it's going to work. Just believe and stay with it. And any, any instruction it gives you along the way, just do it. Whatever it tells you to do, just, just do it. That's all. Just follow the leading of the Spirit once you're staying on the Word. Many times a lot of people have missed out on their results when it's time to put in the sequel and get their harvest and all those kind of stuff because they don't stay on the Word. They don't listen for the instruction the Spirit of God might want to bring to them for time. Just stay there. If it brings anything, if it doesn't, just keep declaring and rejoicing. The Word is bankable. Isaiah 51, 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. Lay the foundations of the earth and say to Zion, you are my people. God wants to plant the heavens on the earth through you. He wants to plant the heavens on the earth he wants to bring heaven into your situation. He has put his word in your mouth. He has given you scripture. He has spoken his word to your heart. Keep declaring the word. It is sure to produce. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you because it's changing us, birthing in us a new energy. Hope, faith is rising in our heart. Light opens up in our heart. And we are productive kingdom folks as we continue to plant. We are. Yes, we are. In Jesus' name, amen. You have the details for your offerings on the screen. Uh, if you're giving your tithe or your offerings, you have the all For 1030, you have all the details on the screen. I declare in the name of Jesus that the blessing that accompanies the practice of cup tithing rests on you. I speak the blessing over every free way offering given tonight. I declare this is the least you ever be. I declare things this will speak in your life. Things money can buy and things money cannot buy in Jesus' name. Amen. If this message blessed you, um, do well to just share with all the people in your network to be a blessing to them as well. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, oh, what are you waiting for? There's a bell on the side that is ding, it's ringing. Just kick that, hit that bell till it rings. You know what I mean? You see that on, on, the, on the channel, you know, just beneath the screen there. And then you'll be updated every time we have an event and next Sunday I'd like you to join me again 9am at Top Rank Hotels Galaxy if you're in Abuja if you're not in Abuja you can connect to us via this um, YouTube channel as well God bless you have a beautiful evening evening bye